Well, 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 would you look at that. What's shaking, everyone? So, uh, how about that uh, White House siege last night? Sure was a show, hey? That uh, one fat guy with a fucking vuvuzela out there just banging away. But, uh, yeah, in case you guys didn't hear, the uh, White House siege got canceled because, well, it was raining. And uh, you know how black runs in the rain, so... Yeah, exactly. Guess what? I guess their hearts weren't just, just weren't in it because who could have foreseen, oh no, a little bit of rain perhaps over 50 days. But uh, yeah, man, I just think that they're really going to be reconsolidating their efforts, rethinking this. And we're going to take a look at what this White House siege is morphed into, what I think that they're actually doing behind this and... Well, fuck, a real significant chance for violence here in the near, near, near future. So, before we dive into all of that stuff, I really want to thank everybody for supporting me here lately. It's been tremendous, and I can't thank you guys enough. And if there's anything that you'd like to discuss, anything that you find here in this video, as well as future topics you'd like for me to cover, I'm definitely open for suggestions down there in the comments section below. As well, hey, if you're liking what I'm doing, if you want to hit that subscribe button, that'd be terrific. Or even just dropping a like on things. It uh, makes me feel a lot better. And it's, you know, just a little bit of effort from you guys. And, hey, it goes a long way. It makes me feel good about what I'm doing. Anyways, let's rediscover what the fuck actually happened last night. So, they've been this, well, okay, adbusters and the reoccupy movement. So, when Occupy Wall Street happened September 17th, 2011, ooh, big anniversary, this is supposed to be the ninth anniversary, and they were going to take back the White House from the evil Drumpf. Yeah, and then they got a little bit of rain, and they realized that all of their friends were getting arrested, and they realized that Trump was going to be taking this shit seriously, so, fuck it, we're going to play jazz everywhere. Fucking What? Jazz. As if it's not the most annoying form of music. Now they're going to weaponize it further. Fucking jazz. Okay, I'm going to tell you. The jazz is like a handful of musicians in the room together. Each playing their own fucking song. And none of them lining up. But hey, we'll call it artistic. Because, I don't know. The fucking smooth-brained idiots out there think that. Oh, they're all so talented. Because it's a different way to conform to music. Yeah, fuck off. you just trying to overthink shit. You're just like the rest of those fucking bread tubers out there who think that uh, intellectualizing pedophilia is somehow this big brain thing. Or, you know, if you think about something long enough, eventually you can rationalize it. No, you're all fucking creeps. Just get over yourselves. So, this is the final tactical briefing. Probably for this stupid White House siege movement. What does it take to resuscitate a sick and dying nation, reawaken its better angels, or angles, and reunite, there's no angels here, and reignite a unifying spirit of democracy? A carnival of joyful resistance is just the thing. Starting tomorrow at September 17th, let's summon the revolutionary sweetness that is calling for, that is our calling card in Zuccotti Park, and electrify the 50 days leading up to November 30th, or November 3rd, rather. On street corners and in front of federal buildings in every town and city. Gee, um, I don't think that there are any federal buildings in every town and city in Zuccotti Park. Boy, it sure seems like you guys were shifting your fucking goalposts here. It's almost like you guys got scared. Whoops. Looks like law and order prevailed. Chalk one up for the orange man. On street corners and in front of federal buildings, on every town and city, and in front of the White House, let's start playing non-violent improv jazz. Ugh. You know what? This should be a form of uh, domestic terrorism. I do agree that Trump should be able to charge Antifa with uh, domestic terrorism. In defiance of Trump's tyranny. Really? Cite your source, fuckers. Bring your horn. <laughs> Find a comrade. Mm, there you go. That old hammer and sickle mask is a slipping a little bit. And strike up a riff. 
as the music swells, I couldn't care less about this anymore. Guess what? They backed out. Now, if you see any kind of fucking fat hippies behind, uh, you know, black regalia, I guess they're a part of this uh, ninth year celebration. They got scared. They chickened out. But you won't hear hide nor hair of this from the media. You know what you will hear? Well, actually, first we'll touch on what you aren't hearing. You notice how Portland's been exceptionally quiet lately? I thought, and I thought it was a fairly f- valid opinion at the time, was that everybody was consolidating their power for this siege that was well-publicized. I won't say well-organized. We went through this a few days ago. But it was going to be Antifa's big hurrah right at ground zero, right at the White House. And that's why, you know, Portland, New York, everything else was just kind of calming down. But then I also got to thinking too, okay, Oregon deputized all of their state police and all of these Antifa dickheads were starting to get charged with federal crimes. Uh, As soon as Law & Order got stepped up huge in Lancaster with that fucking maniac wielding a knife, running around cutting people, which Joe Biden also thinks that... uh, you know, social workers and psychologists on site would be able to help defuse the situation. Meanwhile, not understanding that, uh, um, what the fuck good is a psychologist going to do when somebody's lunging at you with a knife? I don't know. Yeah, t- mere details to old crazy Joe. But, yeah, everything just calmed down here recently. And it wasn't from a lack of crazy people wanting to do crazy shit. No, maybe it was the fact that law and order is finally prevailing. But there's also a significant chance, like I mentioned in the open, that there is going to be a reignition of violence here on the 26th of September. One short week away. Because, okay, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Proud Boys, right? The way that Oregon Live wants to, I don't know, kind of gaslight the public is that they're this far-right racist movement. Okay, I'll break this down real simple for you. The Proud Boys were formed on Compound Media by Gavin McInnes, co-founder of Vice, in case you didn't know. Because you can barely tell by the shell that Vice has become. Fucking dregs of society they are. But it was all a joke, because the producer, Ben Ratner, at the time, was um, a little light in the loafers, and... A virgin and had a propensity for show tunes and proud of your boy was a song that was sung in an old i think it was a rogers and hammerstein musical and they would always play the little stinger and eventually it just evolved into callers that would call into gavin mckinnis's show on compound media and they'd finish the call or start the call with the proud of your boy little stinger Eventually, it just kind of morphed into being the fans of Gavin. And then they got a whole bunch of ridiculous things to join the the Proud Boys. Because they took the little Proud of Your Boy stinger. And yeah, no, it, it sounds good for a group of people. And uh, as far as I know, they are, I don't know, um, just freedom-loving individuals. Okay. Uh, the only time that they've in, been kind of uh, documented being violent was when Antifa showed up to one of their uh, rallies a few years ago, or one of their actual peaceful protests. Take note, guys. And <laughs> fucking Antifa was getting all up in their face, invading their personal space. And one of the Proud Boys took a swing in a giant... Melee ensued. Did the Proud Boys initiate violence? Yes. Were Antifa being antagonistic? Yes. I'd call it a wash. But if you want to attribute the Proud Boys with any sort of violence, there's your case. And that's what the media is running with. Just like that shitty Atlantic article where President Trump called John McCain a loser. Because John McCain lost the 2008 election. 
and the Proud Boys get called far-right extremists because they engaged Antifa, and Antifa are far-left extremists. The media won't tell you that, but, uh, you know, when you have two opposing forces, and you want to pit them against each other, you want to make one seem really, really bad, and the uh, slur de jour is a uh, far-right extremist. At least it was at the time. Now it's just back to good old racist again because you got white privilege and whiteness. But let's uh, break this down because after Jay Danielson, uh, the Portland Patriot Prayer member, was gunned down and killed by that fucking animal, Michael Reinhold, uh, the Proud Boys announced that they were going to be coming to Portland September 26th and hold a peaceful rally in his memory as well as to support Trump and liberty at large. Um, they are American citizens. They are perfectly fine doing that. It's kind of ironic that a wildly pro-American group was founded by a French-Canadian. Oh, hey, fucking whatever. I'm fairly pro-America. I love me some liberty. But, um, yeah, you know, fair enough. To each your own. Anyways, I digress. But this is inevitably, inevitably going to be bringing out Antifa. And uh, if there's going to be one more flare up of violence, that's going to be it. And it also happens to coincide with the first presidential debate taking place not but two days later. On well, I guess this is going to take place on the 26th, and the presidential debates are on the Monday, the 29th. So, three days, sorry, math. I mean, that's late in the day. Anyways, so, the media is doing a terrific job gaslighting for Joe Biden. Okay? I'm going to pull up this article. I condemn violence in Portland. Joe Biden said that he condemns violence on both sides and he challenges Donald Trump to do the same. Now, this is an article from about three weeks ago, so I'm sure you guys have seen it or at least come across it. Trump is the law and order candidate. Trump is, by all accounts, doing everything he can to stop the violence, the unrest, and for Joe Biden to so blatantly say that Donald Trump is not condemning violence on all sides is laughable and poisonous to the electorate. It's poisonous because the media will absolutely run cover for Joe Biden. And this was my theory a long time ago. I figured that the riots would go away quietly, just like they have. And the Democrats are just going to champion this because this was happening in Democratic cities and Democratic states nearly exclusively. And once the riots went away, Joe Biden can claim, hey, look at I stopped the riots. I called for them to stop. And they did. Look at how great of a leader I am. And the media would be like, Yes, Joe Biden called for the riots to stop and they stopped. What a great leader. Vote for Joe. Vote for Joe. Meanwhile, Trump will be over there yelling on Twitter that, uh, hey, I've been calling for peace the entire time. I've been actively doing this. And these were my deputized state police that stopped all this violence. And the media, regardless, they're just going to keep running with it. Look at the way that they run with this Atlantic article that's been debunked seven ways from Sunday. Or... I don't know. Pick everything. Find people on both sides. Exactly. I uh, didn't mention that the preceding line was Nazis and neo... Yeah, the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, the KKK members, I condemn vociferously. They're just going to gaslight for Joe Biden and the Democrats. It won't matter. You've seen that with the town hall. Compare and contrast. Joe could run wild with every fucking conspiracy theory on the left in the book. Meanwhile, Trump has to defend every single word he's ever said, and it needs to be exactly to what they believe at all times. You can't get away with an inch on the mile. Or on the right, on the mile? That makes no sense. You can't get away with an inch if you are right of center. 
if you hold any sort of libertarian leanings. You have to be this left authoritarian nowadays in order to get uh, any kind of play. And I didn't, as much as I seen this coming from a mile away, I formulated this opinion before I realized that the Proud Boys were going to be coming into Portland on the 26th. And then as soon as the debates were announced and finalized to be taking place on, well, September 29th, real close to that, uh, Proud Boys meeting, man, as soon as the media will be there in force. And as soon as anything sideways happens, it's going to be painted as right-wing violence, regardless of the fires, regardless of the Molotov cocktails that will be thrown by the left exclusively. This will be painted as a right-wing extremist event, and Trump will be smeared by it. Meanwhile, all the peaceful protests that have happened for, I don't know, the three or four months will magically get wiped away. And, uh... <laughs> October polling numbers, as good as they are right now for Trump. Uh, Rasmussen has a, a plus seven as of today, which is, uh, I take your poll numbers and shove them up your ass. I don't think any of them cor are correct. As much as some people like to cite them that, oh, uh, Rasmussen was correct in 2015. Nobody saw Trump coming except for the people who believed in him. Okay. Let's fucking get that straight. All of these polls are completely outdated because all they do is they keep calling the same people from the same pool, hearing the same answers, and just confirming their biases. That's why everybody's polls look so fucking retarded. There's very little deviation, but they're all fucking wrong. And that's why. Outdated methods contacting outdated people. But... The media loves to run with them. And if they manage to gaslight the public on this, I don't know. We'll just pull it up because I'm tired of looking at this hill. The hill make me sick. Yeah, Far right Proud Boys move Portland rally to the former Vanport City, a site fraught with racist history. So as soon as the media can capture any right wing violence, they will immediately attribute it to Donald Trump because he has never decried any sort of violence from the right. He is merely a fascist, a big Cheeto dictator. And that's what I think is going to happen. So this White House siege went from being a 100% Antifa funded and <laughs> orchestrated event to being, I don't know, just a bunch of sad fat people playing plastic instruments in the rain. And now we're just going to end up with another smear job heading into the election. I just don't want you guys to fall for it. And I want you to remember when all of this happens in the next few weeks and realize that Don Consuelo was 100% correct. But as long as you guys keep watching, I'll be happy enough with that. Anyways, guys, thanks for paying attention to this video. I think it's a uh, important message and one you should take very seriously. Don't buy the shit of the media anymore listen to independent creators and i'm not just saying don't just listen to me appreciate it if you do listen to me i'm just getting started and i can really use your support but also take many different opinions off of a bunch of different spectrums because your arguments will only get stronger from there and that's what led me to start the channel and i hope that's what leads you guys to having better opinions and better thoughts anyways before this gets too rambly i'll cut it off there Thanks again for watching, guys. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.